Hey everybody, this is Peter the Asian. Today I'll be doing a in-depth review of the Hailung HG seven, uh, 178. So I had this piano for about two years now, so I have some positive things to say and of course some negative things to say about it. So let's get right in. And this is just a voiceover, so the video may seem out of sync. So I mean with this uh, piano, uh, one thing is for sure that it's the build the, the material used is very good. Um, the rims are made out of uh, hard rock maple and they actually have very good strings as well. I believe they're the German Ruslau strings. And as well as the signature Hailoons uh, features such as the uh, hydraulic hinges and like the slow fall uh, cover board. So those are kind of nice to have but for me that's just not too big of a deal. The main part for this piano is that it's a valued piano. So say someone's really growing out of a digital piano, digital keyboard, and yet you, you can't really afford for say something like a new Steinway. Uh, I, I believe that this piano is right up there with the Yamahas, especially when considering the sound quality is it absolutely knocks it out of the water. Overall, this piano is really good. I mean, the bass does sound really full. It has a really good scale design and whatnot. But uh, there, there are some craftsmanship issues, as if you may have already seen. Like, there may be some just weird looking discoloration or sawdust or improper finishes around the piano. And furthermore, uh, one of the big issues I have, well, it's more aesthetic of an aesthetic issue, but rather the cast iron frame. Um, it's, it's not really straight. There are several parts where the frames kind of like wobbly on the sides. I don't know if one of the shots has captured it. As well as it's got an in, uneven finish on the side of the frames as opposed to the top. So I think they just lacquered directly over top and didn't really bother with the details on the sides and underneath. So that was particularly an issue and especially the size of the frame as well. Uh, because I, I couldn't clean the soundboard with a soundboard tool. And then that brief flash of that image right there, I guess you might have to rewind it, but I'll try to extend it out. It's actually just a random screw poking out of um, what is the action mechanism. And it's just things like that where, you know, it, it, it kind of sucks to have, but I mean, you are paying for what you get. So, like, when I was cleaning out the keys, because the keys felt really sloppy, I was adjusting the height of the keys. Um, basically, there was sawdust and just wood chips within the crevices of the keys. I had to blow them out one by one, so that was quite an issue for me. But other than that, um, one last thing I have to say is about the action. Uh, this may just be due to overusing it, but it, it's starting to feel kind of sloppy. Um, I don't really know the exact word to describe them, but they they do uh, appear to be inferior as compared to the Renner actions. I, from my um, personal um, experience, the Renner ones, they're a lot more smooth and they appear to be a little more robust, a little less play in the actions. But nonetheless, I feel like this action is pretty good. You can still trail pretty well when not. Another issue I had with this piano that's um, it's almost been done fixed is actually the pedals squeaking underneath. So with that, I had to just take it out, <clears throat> clean everything out. It, it was it was just a combination of you know um, in bad craftsmanship and you know, just dirty. So just clean that out and then it's fine. You know you can put some spacers and whatnot in there it, but it was the squeaking has stopped now it's just minor adjustments and i guess in a sense that this is actually good because um, i bought a few piano technician books and bought a few tools to just work on these things so in a way it's actually not all bad because if you're looking into you know 
learning how to do regulation and voicing and just general repairs, I think you know this piano is and it's also an excellent choice because if you do make like a minor mistake, it's really it's not gonna hurt you like as if you had like a, a quarter million dollar C Beckstein, right? Uh, so this is actually a great learning opportunity for someone who wants to learn some technician work as well. Just say like tuning, you know, hammer adjustments, filing, and things like that. I, I think it's a great experience. And that's about all I have to say for this piano. Uh, I'm looking forward to play this piano in the future and see what comes up. And I'll provide you guys with an updated video. But overall, I think there's a lot of mileage left in this piano. Then um, I'm gonna continue to improve, and uh, one day I'll probably outgrow it and upgrade to like a Fazioli. One day. Um, the past three clips was just video samples recorded on a GoPro, so don't take the audio quality too seriously. But it's just to show uh, how things are working with different pieces. And thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for an updated video.